Seven years ago, I uploaded the first video on YouTube showing how to make a DC arc or stick welder using microwave oven transformers. I produced three different videos. Since that time, many other channels made microwave oven arc welders, very few of them DC, and people also used heavier wire to make high current metal melters, such as the one that Grant Thompson made on his channel, The King of Random. At the end of this video, you're going to see links to my other videos posted. In this video, I'm going to show you the best way to make a high current metal melter, like you see right here, using a microwave oven transformer. I'm going to be showing you current, voltage, and inductance readings, and we'll also have some fun melting various objects. First, I'm going to go over everything that you're going to need in order to duplicate this setup. I'll also place a link in the video description area for great deals on supplies that you're going to need for this project. This microwave oven transformer was used in another project on my channel. That's why it was cut open and welded back together. But for this project, unlike many other channels showing these, there is no reason whatsoever for you to be cutting open this core in order to make what you see right here. If you're going to be inserting a spool that's wound with many, many turns, hundreds or thousands of turns of wire, then absolutely you're going to want to cut open the wells so you can insert that winding as one piece. But if you're only going to be winding one and three quarter turns of heavy wire or even 20 or 30 turns of eight gauge wire, there's no reason at all to be spending the extra time cutting open the transformer and then having to either glue it which I do not like at all, because when you glue something like this, as it gets hot and cold, hot and cold, the glue is going to expand differently than the transformer laminations, and that's going to make that glue crack, and eventually the I will pop off of the E. So the best way to do it is to leave everything intact. Now for this project, you're going to need a microwave oven transformer. When I lived in the Bahamas, I had access to so many of these from the dump. I had at least 15 in my house. Now I'm down to only about two or three remaining. The transformer you see here can be found in microwave ovens that are non-inverter type, and they're usually rated between 800 or 1,000 watts. In a minute, I'll give you a close-up view of the secondary side, which now has this thick cable in it. Originally, it had many, many turns of extremely fine gauge wire, and that's what produced the high voltage output between 2,000 and 2,500 volts. In addition to the transformer, you're also going to need some very heavy wire. And the best source for this wire, believe it or not, is not Home Depot, not Lowe's, but a welding supply company. You want 2 ot, which is 2 slash 0. If you go any bigger, it will not fit inside the core. Some cores maybe could fit 3 ot, but you want to stick with the 2 ot. And the advantage of purchasing this wire from the welding supply, the covering on it, or the jacket, is rated for 105C, which is very hot, which is around 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And because it's a fine strand, it's very easy to bend the cable and get it to go inside the core. If you take the one from Home Depot, which is a THHN insulated wire, it does not have many fine strands, and it will be next to impossible to make these radiuses here when installing the wire inside the transformer. I'll have a link posted in the video description area where you can pick up four feet of this two watt wire at a very reasonable price. The wire is 100% copper. You're also going to need two of these electrode holders. 200 to 400 amp holders are just fine. These I picked up at a store going out of business, Orchard Hardware. You can also pick them up over at Harbor Freight, Home Depot, and if you can't find one locally, you can look in the video description area because I did place a link. On the bottom, you could place some rubber feet or felt, like you see right here. You could pick that up anywhere. Now on this end, this wire here used to power the unit is 14 gauge. I picked up this four foot section or four foot extension cord over at Home Depot. It was very inexpensive. Cut off the plug end and then I added right over here 
female blade connectors which locked right onto the terminals like you could see right over here. The ground wire feeds through. I'll explain this in a minute how it's controlled right through here and I scraped off an area where there was a hole on the transformer because there is varnish covering this. You can see it right here. You want to scrape away, make sure you can see shiny metal, install a ring connector, and then you want to take that ground wire and rivet it right to that transformer. Now the control box, now what I did is I took the power wire coming in right here. The hot wire flows in inside this project box and then it goes to this fuse holder. Inside this fuse holder is a 15 amp slow blow fuse designed for use with microwave ovens. Make sure you have one of those. Put that in. This switch was pulled from a computer and it's rated 15 amps at 125 volts. On top is a power indicating LED and it's nothing more than a green LED that's connected anti-parallel to a 1N4007 diode. And what I mean by anti-parallel, the anode of the LED is twisted together with the cathode of the 1N4007 rectifier diode. And then the other leg is twisted to the other side of the LED. The purpose of connecting it that way is to have only the positive pulses from the AC line going into the anode of the LED. Current is also limited into the LED by connecting a 47K half watt resistor to the anode side of the LED. In this image here, you can see exactly how I connected everything up inside that project box. It's a very safe setup. Now let me give you a close-up of the transformer, explain a few more things. Right over here you can see the primary winding, which is around 90 or 100 turns of 15 or 16 gauge, usually aluminum wire that's coated with copper. On this end here you have the blade connectors slid onto the two terminals. You have your hot and your neutral. Make sure this is all covered up. You could use insulated blade ends or you could use heat shrink. Right over here you can see this is where the high voltage winding used to be connected from the microwave. You had the many turns of fine wire right here like you can see in this image. And that wire is connected right over here. The best way to remove that high voltage winding once you get the transformer in your hands over here would be that high voltage winding. Get a very sharp wood chisel. All right, and you're going to hold it right where that winding would be. And you're going to hit with the hammer and go straight down. You'll cut it away nice and clean. And then go all the way to the bottom and do the same thing to where it goes through on the bottom. Once you do that, you could take a square object or a round rod with a hammer. And then you can tap the winding straight through and out the other side like you can see right here in this clip. Let's go there. Now just pry it away. Bend that inward. Cut the red wires out. Sliding, of course, as I'm doing it. Going in, so now the side. Once that high voltage winding's been removed, clear away the inside of these openings. Make sure there's no sharp edges. There is play for this wire. It's not tight. It might look that way, but it isn't. The 2 watt wire fits in there very well. You're going to insert the wire from one side. Bring one end through. Over the top, down the other side, come out the bottom. Then you're going to bring it up one more time 
and do one and three quarter turns. While you're doing that, make sure you figure so that the ends line up like you see right here. The clamps attach very easily to the end of the stripped cable using a hex key or a Phillips screwdriver. Now before I turn this on, you want to make sure the clamps are apart. There's a lot of current that's going to be flowing, so make sure they do not touch each other. The unit's now plugged into a 20 amp small appliance circuit. And right here I just want to show you when I power it up, you'll see the LED come on. When the LED is off, that also indicates the fuse is blown, so it's very easy. And you're going to hear the transformer humming. Here we go. Okay, let me show you how much current the transformer draws. Now keep in mind, microwave oven transformers, even if the secondary is not being used, draws around 10 or 11 amps. So let me just put this clamp meter powered on. And let's turn the switch on. And you could look right here. And this one's drawing right around 11.9 amps. When I go outside and start melting things, I'm going to take this clamp and I'm going to place it right around this cable here and we'll be measuring how much current is flowing. Okay, let me turn on the transformer, take a look at the AC voltage output. I'll connect the probes and you can look right over there. And it's higher than two. Two point three eight volts. Now we're going to take a look at the inductance of the primary winding, the winding that has around a hundred turns of that fifteen or sixteen gauge wire. The WaveTech twenty seven XT is going to display it in millihenries right here. Twenty five millihenry. Now let's measure the inductance of the heavy cable. We'll get to put it way down because it's not going to be much. And remember, wires have inductance, so I'm going to try and keep them as straight as possible. Now let's touch the probes, make sure it's close to zero. Good. Now let's touch one here, one there. And wow, it's a low reading, 0 0.002 millihenry. Now before I go outside and start melting a few things, I cannot run this continuously. The transformer core will get too hot. And you'll also start to make this heavy cable get very warm if you start shorting a lot of things out for a prolonged period of time. There is a duty cycle, and I would say it's around 40 or 50%. If you'd like to use it more than that, then I recommend taking the fan from the microwave oven, placing this inside of a box, and positioning the fan very close to keep the transformer cooler. The first test is going to be a 16 common nail. It does have an electroplating of zinc on top of it. So when I place this in the clamp, you're going to see the zinc vaporize. This will light up and glow and then melt completely through. You're going to measure the current rating on the meter there. It is a 600 amp meter, but it will go a little higher. So we're going to take a look at the reading there. That reading will be in the bottom right corner of your screen. You see how quickly it burned through that nail. Okay, let's try this combination wrench that was part of a kit for assembling something. It's just under an eighth of an inch thick. Let's see how well it does.
And that's as far as I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to burn up the clamp. And that wrench got pretty damn hot, but it did not go all the way through. Okay, it looked like it was going to burn all the way through before my fire started with the protective cap. So I took all the caps off. Let's try it again and see how well it goes. Hopefully we can get it to burn through. If the wires are starting to get too hot, I'm going to turn it off. Here we go. Okay, heating up so far. Wires feel okay. So far okay. Just don't want it to get too hot. Wires starting to get fairly warm. Let it go a little bit longer. I think if I let it run longer, it'd actually burn all the way through. But I'm gonna stop it in a minute because I don't want my wires to get too hot. But that's glowing pretty damn bright. I think it's on the verge of melting through that wrench. But I don't want to push it too much more. I'm going to shut it off. Okay. Let me let everything cool down. I think if, if I had heavier wire, 3 out, I probably could have burned right through it and not had to worry about the insulation on the wires beginning to burn. Now we're going to be trying this very thick washer. Now it's more than likely going to happen when the transformer is turned on. Because this space here is less than this space here, the current is going to take the path of least resistance. So this area here will heat up, possibly melt, and then you'll see the current go to the opposite side, and that should melt. Here we go. Exactly as I thought. And it just opened. Right there is another spot. Current is no longer flowing. Okay, let's try a fork. Hopefully the current flows through a few of the tines. Because if it only goes through one or two, it's more than likely going to burn them out, and then it'll be over. So let's give it a try. Okay. And I figured that area would go because it's thin. Yep. Hmm, surprised it didn't burn through already. I'm going to end up turning it off in a minute. I don't want my wires to get too hot. And you can see where the current's flowing. The first time and the third, mostly through the first. And the wires are actually not that hot. So I'm going to let it run a little while. Definitely not that hot. Let it heat up some more. 
Let me take a current reading. Let's see where we're at. Believe it or not, we're only at... There's only 120 amps flowing through there because it's going through that one time now and that one time can't allow enough current to flow through it. Eh, I think we're good. It's not going to get anywhere. Okay, power off. Now we're going to try melting this large nut three quarters of an inch from here to here, seven sixteenths from the top to the bottom. Here we go. Wires are starting to get a little hot, so I'm going to be shutting it down. Yep, could not make it through that large nut, but it definitely heated it very, very well. And after doing all these tests, you can see that the wiring looks just fine, nothing is burned, and the color of the primary winding on the transformer is exactly the same. It did not change because it did not get too hot. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.